In this video, we're going to take a look at how a domestic lighting circuit is wired in the UK. To wire a domestic lighting circuit, you would normally use cable like that, which is normally either 1mm or 1.5mm twin core and earth. It's called twin core and earth because you have two insulated cores, the blue which is the neutral, the brown which is the live and the earth which is unshielded. That should always be sleeved with green and yellow sleeving to identify it as being the earth wire. There are basically two types of circuits which are regularly used. One is known as looping at the ceiling rows and the other is known as looping at the switch. You can also get looping at the junction box which is my preferred method. To understand this fully I'm going to demonstrate this using the most basic of diagrams. Most houses have two lighting circuits, a upstairs and a downstairs. In this video we're going to look at the upstairs lighting circuit purely because it is easier to demonstrate. As a side note, the wiring colours will either be red, black and green and yellow or brown, blue and green and yellow depending on when the property was wired. We're going to start off at the consumer unit. This is where the electricity enters the property and is distributed around the property. Your consumer unit might look like this. This. Or this. If you have a consumer unit that looks like this, I highly recommend getting it checked out by a competent electrician as these are often not suitable for today's modern households. They essentially all do the same thing. Older consumer units use fuses, whereas newer consumer units use MCBs or miniature circuit breakers. Lighting circuits are normally protected by either a 5 amp fuse or a 6 amp circuit breaker. In some older properties you might not have any earth wires at any of the switches or at any of the ceiling roses. This is because there was a copper shortage in either the 1960s or 70s and so the earth wire was omitted from some lighting circuits. If you don't have an earth wire it is critical that you only use plastic switches and ceiling roses. You should never connect a metal switch or a metal light fitting if there is no earth wire as it could be lethal under fault conditions. At the consumer unit the wires in the circuit cable connect to the earth bar, the neutral bar and the live wire connects to either the fuse or the circuit breaker. This cable then goes to the first switch if the loop in is at the switch or the first ceiling rows if the loop in is at the ceiling rows. To tell if you have a loop in at the switch or the ceiling rows you need to remove a single gang switch. I should also point out that it is possible to have a combination of looping at the ceiling rows and looping at the switch in some properties. Imagine you are looking down on your house from above with the roof removed. This is what the loft would look like. Now let's add a few walls, then let's add some joists. The green circles represent the ceiling roses. There will be at least one of these in each room and one at the top of the stairs. For clarity I have removed the joist from the picture and I'm going to colour the circuit wire in red for clarity. In order to make the lights illuminate they need electricity so we now need a circuit cable. Somewhere in the loft there will be a hole with a cable going through it for the lighting circuit. This cable goes to the first ceiling rows. Then the next, then the next, then the next until you get to the last light on the circuit. Now in order to switch the lights on and off we need a light switch so let's add one of these to each room. Now we need a cable running from the light switch to the ceiling rows. This will be shown as the grey cable and is sometimes known as the switch cable. Obviously if you are looking down from the loft you can't actually see the switches but you will see the cables disappearing through the plasterboard into the rooms below. Also all of the cables will normally be grey if you have the loop in at the switch your loft will look more like this. A ceiling rose and a junction box are basically the same thing when used for a lighting circuit. To start off with I'll demonstrate what the loop in at the ceiling rose looks like. This is a ceiling rose you can see that the lamp is connected to the neutral terminal and the L terminal on the left. In the centre is the loop terminal and at the back is the earth terminal. The circuit cable enters the ceiling rose this is the cable that is connected to the consumer unit. 
The brown wire connects to the loop terminal, the blue wire connects to the neutral terminal and the earth wire connects to the earth terminal. Obviously the power now needs to go to the next light in the circuit and so another circuit wire is connected to the exact same terminals. We now need a cable running to the switch. This is known as the switch cable. You can get special twin brown core and earth cable for this purpose but the majority of people either use brown sleeving or brown insulation tape to identify the live wire. Because this cable runs to the switch it only contains a live wire and a switch live wire and of course the earth. This cable connects to the loop terminal or permanent live and the L terminal which is known as the switched live terminal because it is only live when the switch is in the on position. If you come across a ceiling rose where there are only two cables that means that it is the last ceiling rose on that circuit hence there is not another circuit cable going to the next light. If you look at the wiring in a single gang switch it will look something like this. The permanent live is connected to the COM terminal and the switch live wire which is sleeved brown connects to the L1 terminal. The earth wire is always sleeved green and yellow and should be terminated to the earth terminal. Obviously it can be more complicated if the switch is a two gang or a three gang but basically that is how the looping at the ceiling rows works. Looping at the junction box is exactly the same apart from you use a junction box instead of a ceiling rose and an additional piece of twin core and earth cable which runs to the light. Normally the junction box will be in the loft or above the ceiling and a single cable will attach to the light fitting. This makes it really easy to change the light fitting as there are only three wires to terminate at the light. This is a four terminal junction box as with the ceiling rose method the circuit cable enters the junction box with the live neutral and earth connected. Then another cable is connected to the same terminals which is the circuit cable going to the next light in the circuit. The switch cable wires connect to the permanent live terminal and then to the switch live terminal where the wire should be sleeved with brown sleeving. The earth wire should be connected to the earth terminal. Now it's simply a case of running a cable from the light fitting and connecting the blue wire to the neutral terminal and the brown wire to the switched live terminal and of course the earth wire to the earth terminal. Once the switch is switched on it closes the contact between live and switch live and energizes the lamp. The loop in at the switch is not as common but is favoured by some electricians. For this method you are going to need a suitable connector to join the neutral wires together and perhaps a terminal for the earth wires if there are no earth terminals. This is a basic single gang light switch. The circuit cable from the consume unit goes into the switch back box and the live wire is terminated into the COM terminal. The neutral wire is not connected to the switch at all but is terminated into a connector block. The earth wire either connects to the earth terminal or is connected into another connector block. Now we will add another circuit cable. This goes to the next light switch in the circuit and is connected to the same terminals as the first circuit cable. This time there is no switch cable obviously as we are at the switch. So this time we just run a cable to the light fitting and this is connected to the earth, neutral and L1 terminals. Once the switch is switched on the light will be energised and will illuminate. Obviously if you only find two cables at the switch instead of three you are at the last light on that particular circuit. I have done videos on how light switches work, two way switching and three way switching so they might also be of interest. I will link to those videos in the description. I hope this video has been useful. If it has and you have not done so already please subscribe to the channel.